The hashtag is the stand on Twitter, the stand KE on Twitter at Ram Aguko at Y254 channel. We are live on our website at y254.co.ke. That is www.y254.co.ke. We are live also on Facebook. Make sure that you see hear us up as we continue with this conversation tonight. We are with Honorable Milio Dambo and Honorable David Sankok. What do you think about their stand in regards to the legislation in the country? Uh, Karibu sana weshimiwa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you've given your stand, and uh, that was quite intriguing. Umesema, you have an A. Of course. Of which uh, there are many Kenyans who f may agree with you, many may not agree with you. Uh, you've said quite a lot, even uh, uh, in regards to the um, legislative roles that you've made. But let me start with what happened yesterday. Quite a very interesting turn of events where we had the president of the Law Society of Kenya who um, uh, said this, and I quote. We officially declare this house as belonging to the people of Kenya. Anybody who comes here is a, as a parliamentarian will be a trespasser. How are we to see halali kutoka leo? Let me pick it up from there. Do you agree with that? I what, is, agree. What, is, what, is, what is your position in regards to that? Considering that, uh, that they are addressing you specifically as members, members of parliament. I respectfully don't agree with the chair of the, the president of the Law Society mm. of Kenya. Mm. And the reason I don't agree with him, even though I agree, actually, I agreed with um, the chief justice mm. uh, or his advisory, but I don't agree with uh, President Harvey's position because the constitution is very clear that even where the chief justice uh, asks the president uh, to dissolve parliament, until the president does that, then president, uh, the, the parliament is actually still uh, legal. It, he, what he's doing can only come into effect once the president declares parliament dissolved. Then mm. in that case, he can come and anybody he finds, he can actually lawfully evict. Uh, he can use every means, uh, citizens arrest, he can use uh, the courts, he can ask the police to evict us after the president declares. So, it's, so, so before the president dissolves parliament, mm -hmm. parliament is still properly constituted. So he did not jump the gun with what he did yesterday? He did jump the gun because he was coming in. You know, the constitution is very clear. There yeah. are people who went to court and said the parliament has refused to enact laws. Mm -hmm. And if parliament refuses to enact law, there are constitutional processes for en ensuring that um, parliament then should do their work. And we are the ones who passed that constitution mm -hmm. that says that somebody will then go, will, you know, petition the chief justice. The chief justice will advise the president and the president shall dissolve parliament. But there was no time frame that was given to the president. Of course, it is presumed that he will use, uh, you know, uh, his discretion in a reasonable manner, mm -hmm. which means that he sh ordinarily he should uh, dissolve parliament within a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. But even if it doesn't really, the constitution doesn't provide a time frame. I think, I think the time frame was... So he is actually jumping the gun. Mm. The no. constitution does not provide a time frame. It does not provide. No. Um, uh, Honorable Sankok, when uh, the president of LSK m says that p a parliament is illegitimate, how does it come f uh, to you? You know, Ram, uh, mm. we have uh, three arms of government. And uh, parliament is one arm of government. There is a process in which parliament can be dissolved, which was started by the president of the Supreme Court. Mm. That is uh, 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 Maraga, Chief Justice Maraga. Mm. He started. But I think then uh, LCK, LSK chairman, mm. I think these names that we give to these people excite their emotions. Oh, when you give means. somebody a name of a president, then uh, he may have thought that probably mm. he also have the powers of the real president, which mm. he does not have. It is the president that have the power to dissolve parliament. Mm. As uh, my colleague have said, mm. that there is no time frame. And I perfectly agree with what Maraga said, because parliament should actually be dissolved. It have lost focus, both in its role, uh, and we have failed to, to pass the two-third gender rule, which is a requirement. So for me, I agree with uh, the Chief Justice. But what uh, uh, the President of uh, Law Society of Kenya was doing mm -hmm. was just probably to get some headlines 
And as you have seen, he just came, he was offered tea. Considering the region in which we come from, they really love tea. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he did take and he went back. And uh, I thought even uh, the, our president, who is actually the speaker of the National Assembly, that is the head of the, the arm of government called Parliament, mm. is a very intelligent fellow. And uh, I don't know if next time when the president of Law Society of Kenya will be a Maasai, when then they want to take parliament, he will yeah. offer us yeah. meat yeah. or milk. Mursik. <laughs> or Mursik. <laughs> well, of which many people ridicul ridiculed uh, Nelson <laughs> Harvey for that. They were saying they were going to occupy a parliament. But uh, again, they found themselves, um, I don't know if, they, if, if it's right to say they found themselves or they made their way into uh, the kitchen, of which Nelson Harvey said that uh, it wasn't meant to be something that was meant to cause chaos. Let's take a look at what he said. Look at this. We have told the clerk of the National Assembly that effective today, Parliament is illegitimate. Any person who until today was an elected member of the National Assembly or the Senate has ceased being an elected member. He or she is a trespasser. The majority view of the people of Kenya is that Parliament has failed in its obligations. There is rampant corruption, there is nepotism, there is cronyism, there is no development. And we are not limiting our struggle to the two-third gender rule. There are many other reasons as to why Parliament must go home. It has failed to oversight the executive. It has failed to hold the President accountable. Parliament and the Attorney General are buying time through the court process or they have ensured that the court process will deliver an outcome favorable to them. But more importantly, Kenyans must understand the decision by the Chief Justice is one that cannot be challenged in a court of law. Just as none of us can take the President of the Republic of Kenya to court because of a... And he said that there are so many, so many reasons why Parliament should be dissolved. Yeah. One of them is that majority of Kenyans. What did he use to measure the views of majority of Kenyans? These are people who are duly elected by uh, Kenyans. And I think in their knowledge they knew why they elected them. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I think taking parliament by force is like treason. That is a treasonable word, uh, offense. And I, th I don't know. Maybe we'll revisit that one later on. But now parliament has l uh, had a lot of, let's say, failure when it comes to the two-third gender rule. Honorable Mille, I, I remember so many bills um, on the two-third gender rule have been brought on the floor of the, of the House. At some point, you even said in one of um, a, a conference, you said that it looked fashionable. Those are your words. Fashionable to bring um, bills on two-third gender rule and maybe at some point you will bring yours. Um, you are one of the 27 members of parliament who, say, who, who, who sat at the parliamentary select committee. Yes. And uh, at this point, what would be your call to action about this two-third general? Because now it is the reason why parliament is where it is right now. I'm an adherent to the rule of law principle. Mm. And uh, I remember even before the Justice Maraga made this advisory, I was talking at a conference of the Law Society of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And people were asking me, you know, blaming Parliament. And I said, no, Parliament has actually spoken on the issue of two-thirds. Because when you speak, it doesn't always have to be in the positive. It can be mm -hmm. by s affirming what, what people want or refusing. And in my view, Parliament actually failed and thereby refused to pass the two-thirds gender rule. And because of that, we, we uh, anybody who wanted needed to move to the next step mm -hmm. and indeed some people moved to the next step they went to court yeah court has given uh, a lot of directions to parliament and we have failed to hit to the court and under the constitution then somebody could actually petition the chief justice which somebody did so once it went to the chief justice it's no long it's no longer uh, uh, you know we are no longer assist of the matter in law we actually say that we you know our hands, I don't want to use uh, tough legal language, but we really are, mm. the matter is actually out of our hands. So mm -hmm. it's, it goes now to the hands of the chief, uh, I mean, not the chief justice, but to the president. The person who now has 
any role is the president. And the president, the attorney general, has actually gone to court, meaning the president is not agreed with the, the chief justice. I have not actually looked at the grounds of the petition, mm. but perhaps the president is saying that maybe uh, parliament has not, maybe the other uh, mechanisms that have not been exhausted and all that. So I wouldn't say that there's something, you know, parliament has definitely spoken and they're saying they don't want to pass the two thirds, uh, you know, general. You, you, you but, don't on see terms, it but on terms, but in terms of there's an issue that you had also raised earlier on. Mm about parliament you know in general about what have is saying because he's saying we are go looking beyond uh the two-thirds general yes. and saying uh, parliament has failed in its oversight role has failed in you know different different aspects and um i want to say that when i started I actually say that this parliament is going to it's the parliament pr perhaps since independence that will only serve probably two and a half years mm -hmm. when others have served five times why am i saying that we know usually the last year is no, uh, you know, an, a campaign year, so hardly anything happens. Yeah. We've missed one year because of coronavirus. Oh. That's two years gone. We missed the first year's post-election violence. That's three years gone. So this is a parliament that only serves two years. And it has been two years that is also wrought with challenges. The first year it was wrought with challenges of uh, Nasas versus Jubilee. Uh, mm -hmm. The last year it is wrought uh, with other different challenges. Uh, intra-party and inter-party politics. So there is intra-party jubilee politics and inter-party, which is jubilee A, jubilee B versus, you know, other parties. Mm. So there's even a lot more confusion now than there was. And parliament is there for doing work in the midst of all these challenges. And I would want to agree with Sankok that within that, uh, you know, uh, with the, all that in mind, we have done relatively well because we are still able to legislate. We are still able to oversight. Like today, if you actually were in Parliament today, mm -hmm. uh, the Public Investment Committee has passed uh, a report that is indicting uh, the CEO of CAPS that is actually calling for very severe action against the uh, CEO of CAPS. And it was cross-party line. I was, I, I, I'm looking at what the Speaker of uh, uh, of the House said, the Honorable Justice, Justin Muturi, mm. he said that, and I quote, the commission regrets that the Chief Justice appears to be willing, even eager, to plunge the country into a constitutional crisis without exercising the wisdom and circumspension that is expected of the high office he holds. Uh, he said Parliament should not be used as a punching bag and uh, that it was unrealistic to call for its dissolution for failing to enact the gender law. Would you, uh, the gender law, would you uh, agree with that? Yeah, I agree with the speaker 100%. It's unrealistic? It was unrealistic just based on to that gender rule. Because there are a lot of laws that were supposed to be passed mm -hmm. to align it with the constitution, which I have really done. And it is not only the gender rule that we have not passed as parliament. There are the article 100, there are so many other rules that we may not have really aligned to the Constitution. But uh, having said that, uh, let me tell you, Ram, that uh, the Chief Justice just wanted probably headlines and did not really try to... You know, in law, we also balance. The Chief Justice? Yes, the Chief Justice. But why I agree with him on the dissolution of Parliament? Not because of the two that gender rule, but because as a House... We have actually lost direction. You know, in the old constitution, the president was actually an elected member of parliament, and the opposition leader was an elected member of parliament. The president sitting in parliament to defend government business in parliament, and the opposition leader sitting in parliament to defend the citizens of this country and to keep the government on top. Mm -hmm. They are both represented by the majority leader and minority leader, respectively. Now, majority leader is doing his job of defending the government businesses and bring the government agenda into the house. Mm -hmm. The minority leader have joined him to defend the government and to lobby for the government businesses in the house. Now who will defend the citizen of this country? Of which still that debate has that been brought that is up, why up, up, up in, 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 in the house yes. about the role of the majority leader and about whether it is attached to the party at which the majority leader comes from. It is totally attached because he represents the president who was supposed in the other constitution to be a sitting member of parliament. 
But now, because he's not sitting, there must be somebody who will defend the government, defend the manifesto of the ruling party, and bring government agendas into the house. But then I wonder. But now, both of them, the minority leader and the majority leader, are defending the government. So who will be defending the citizen of the country? And how can the citizens of this nation trust legislators who have failed to pass the two-third general rule over so many years? No, no, no. We know why we have uh, failed to pass the two-third general rule. And if I can just say why, is that because we have said the two-third uh, general rule, if they have to be uh, gender top-up, let us know the composition of this particular gender top-up. How many women with disability will be there? How many women who are youth will be there? What is the percentage of women who are from rural areas will be there? That is what we said. And personally, I opposed the two-third gender rule. On the basis that I need, first of all, a formula of the composition of those who will be. Before yes. I get into this issue about a formula of whether they are rural women or non-rural women, yeah. uh, which I think is actually a fallacy because nobody asks for rural men. <laughs> or uh, um, uh, maybe men with disability, I would understand. But nobody really asks men whether they are rural or not. Yeah. Like, I don't know whether my friend Sankok is uh, rural or urban. But, but uh, that's because why nobody we elect really, in every corner of this country so that people can nobody, be nobody from really, rural areas. Nobody really, I am from rural, I am we from don't urban. elect from Nairobi. Is, so is, is what? discriminatory? Yeah, but, but, <laughs> no, no, no. but anyway, let yeah. me get back to the other <laughs> issue that actually is alluded to. Mm. And I think I would just want to set the record straight that when a government is elected, the government is elected to represent the interests of the citizens. So it's not the opposition that represents the interests of the citizens. And like what my good friend here, who is num my number two, is saying, <laughs> he's a quick learner, that's why he's my number two. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can see he still has a lot of catch up to do. <laughs> and what I can say is that <laughs> when, when the government, when any party is campaigning. Mm. They campaign on a party manifesto. And what they are basically doing is they are telling the Kenyans that when you elect us, we mm -hmm. are going to do one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And what wa who was the package? The package was a president and, and deputy, deputy president. Mm -hmm. And both the president and deputy president promised Kenyans that when you elect us, we are going to do one, two, three, four. Now, there is a possibility to have a working arrangement, even with the party, that is a minority party because we no longer have opposition but we have a minority party in the house mm. and in special circumstances in a country that can actually happen when i came in on the 10th parliament we had special circumstances and we formed a coalition government out of necessity to push the country forward in the same manner this parliament or this country uh, this situation now could be equated to uh, what we had in the 10th parliament where there was a coalition of the unwilling mm -hmm. uh, because you'll have the coalition of the willing but that was a coalition of the unwilling to forge the country forward unfortunately when we tried uh, when the president tried to move the country forward instead my good friend Sankok has in his and his colleagues uh, just bolted out of their own party and they're doing a very good job of opposition so they said no, we can't all be opposing uh, and where they shouldn't even be opposing, mm -hmm. they should we, we actually understand. be oversighting. No, 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 no. But instead of they oversighting, be in now they, are, they should be in government. They've forgotten they are all in government. Instead, they are not even oversighting, they are opposing. When no. we don't have no, opposition, no, no. we have oversight role. They should be doing oversight role. So what I would want to encourage my brother, uh, Ole Sankok, is that, one, support the presidency that you brought in place and don't oppose the president that you brought in place. And when we have a common agenda, uh, which is to bring the country or forge the country, enable the country to forge ahead, mm -hmm. they should actually be happy. Because oh. when you have peace, when you have peace in the country, it actually enables the sitting government to work very well, no, without not, tear gas, without not, closing not having, shops. Not having peace yes. to strangle the citizen. You know, you put it very well that the government in place was elected on the basis of the manifesto. Majority yeah. of Kenyans saw two manifesto, the NASA manifesto and the Jubilee manifesto. They said, we go as per the Jubilee manifesto. The majority elected the Jubilee. So we have a manifesto. Now, if we are implementing as the Jubilee and the ruling party, the manifesto, who will put us on check and balance, who will represent the citizen and say, no, this is what we promised us, 
this is not what we promise us. But now, you, at the same time, uh, and but again, we are not elected. Again, we are not again, representing the citizens. And again, citizen. let yes. me tell you. Le, no, uh, who are you representing? You are no, elected. The government that is elected no, 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 no. is elected to you know, represent the you know, citizens. I, I, I am Millie, aware that Millie uh, is now arguing on and, and, and is arguing on the point of, you know, you know, they are now the one who are measuring our loyalty to the president. We are very loyal to our president. No, we are, are you, are you, are you we are not measuring But is the one big four agenda and his legacy? We are fulfilling the big four agenda. You but you know, with it, for the you. sake of uh, everything, there mm. must be check and balances. Now, and the one Shimiwa, you are aware that you've been discharged. And, you've been discharged from the National Coalition and Equality and uh, Equal Opportunities. Uh, 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 equal Opportunity yes. by the Jubilee Party. Yes. What do you feel about that? No, of course, I was discharged uh, procedurally. It was mm. followed. The procedure was followed because it is the. According to our standing order 176 1, 176 2, it is the nominating party that will place a member and discharge a member from a committee. Probably they thought um, better off in another committee than the committee that I was in. And by the way, I only served in that committee for two months, 14 days. That is a world record, uh, the shortest ever serving member of parliament, a member of a, a, a parliamentary select committee. So. I'm proud of my record. I've set a world record. I have no problem. I have no issue with it. And being discharged from that committee mm -hmm. does not mean that there is issues with the, the party. There is somebody else who will put more effort in that particular committee. I'm in the committee of labor. And uh, labor and social welfare, the Ministry of Labor oversight, the National uh, now, Council for Personal Disability, the now, people so, are so you have no, So in other words, you have no problem with the... the decision made by the it, Jubilee party it was done it, in the right manner in the right manner uh, now to, to follow the law i accepted and i say thank you for the two months that i had because been serving. That, because that was the order given by the ruling party leader yes uh, what about the order given by the ruling party leader not to continue campaigning till the right time uh, you know let me tell you uh, sometimes as uh, members of parliament and as leaders Okay. We have also a say in whatever decision that is made, be made in this country. If I'm told right. not to politics, what am I supposed to do? If I tell you today, watch right. kutangaza, where would I go on a fanya kazgan? Ukiambia daktari as a watch a kutibu, and I go a fanya kazgan. Me, 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 I love to do politics. You, you, for because you, you can't help yourself. And then for oh, right. and I, Let, I you, let's, take, <laughs> let's take this break. We'll be back in a bit. Remember the hashtag uh, is the, the, the stand KE. Uh, he says that come away in Monasiasa. That is what you're, you're supposed to be doing. If someone tells you what to do, what you are, you're, not to do what you're supposed to what do. What am I supposed can, to do? Can you stop it? The hashtag is the stand KE at Ramaguko at Y254 channel. Remember, we are live. Let's take this, this break. We'll be back in a bit.